When I was 15, I would travel the country giving speeches about the Constitution. I'm not gonna do anything weird to make myself 15, so uh, here I am, I'm 15. The Constitution is a living document. It is a warm, steamy document. It is hot and sweaty. Our bodies had just been left out of this document from the beginning. They were just like, we don't, we don't know what to do with this kind of a body. <laughs> Our Constitution acknowledges that who we are now might not be who we will become. All right, Heidi, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This interview feels, if nothing, is timely. So let me ask you this. Um, one of the things that I found interesting that you talked about being 15 and how it was the challenge of making it personal in the debate, and the show is nothing if not personal, and the genius of the show is that you make it personal for us. So what was more challenging, sort of digging up that up through the writing process of having to perform it every single night while you were on? That is a great question. Um, I have to say that actually, I, I think finding it, digging it up was, was the hardest part. Uh, mainly because I didn't know that's where I was headed when I started making the show. I didn't intend for it to become as sort of deeply personal as it did. Um, and so it brought up a lot of um, feelings when I started writing it. Um, once I started performing it and I was sharing things about the, you know, the sort of trauma in my own family history and, and the trauma in the history of this country, um, it became easier in part because the show ends with such a, a hopeful act uh, this act of debating that I got to like sort of confront the trauma and then end doing something that felt really exciting and hopeful and meaningful. So I started to feel better and better the more I performed it. So that, that leads to my next question. When during the writing process did, did the idea of incorporating other voices in the play came about? Because I love how how that happens, uh, not only in the debate, but the other thing, which I don't want to spoil, but you know, it's just, if you could speak to that. Sure, yeah, I, uh, first of all, as the material started to get more personal and I shared um, things about my own life, I really decided I didn't want to be alone on stage, which is how <laughs> of the, the man arrived on stage, the Legionnaire, and I picked just a wonderful actor that I trusted and said, you will be the judge because I just don't want to be up here by myself. Um, and then after a few years, actually, I thought, wouldn't it be incredible to have someone my age when I did this contest, 15, appear somehow at some point in the play? And I didn't know what she would do or what that would be. Um, and then I cast this wonderful teenage girl and, and the play sort of we worked together for a long time without knowing what it was going to be. And then it's, we sort of found the, the magical ending. <laughs> and no, it's most definitely magical. Whenever I get to this part, I have this desire to protect my 15 year old self. I didn't tell anyone. I have no idea why. My friend Renee and I wanted to be on birth control just in case, just in case. We were in a hot tub and then the sperm swam up and attacked us. <laughs> or, you know, in case of a real attack. So let me ask you this. Do you feel, because we're in Puerto Rico here, we're sort of, our constitution is under the United States constitution. Oh, so that would, be like, <laughs> that would be like a double whammy. But one yeah. of the things that we have in common, one of the things that we're fighting for, which makes your show like so special, is particularly violence towards women and that trauma. Um, so was, throwing those numbers out there on stage, is that feeling like a, a different type of form of protest? Was that sort of cathartic for you? Because it definitely felt for me that, that, that it happens in this play. I, I think so. I think saying that out loud every night, you know, and the numbers are so uh, horrific. They're so, um, when you really listen to them, you realize we just have an epidemic of violence against women um, in our country and all over the world. Um, and I think for me, it was also cathartic because, you know, I talk about the violence in my own family, the violence that my grandmother and mother suffered um, at the hands of a male abuser. And so for me, there was something about getting to say that every night um, felt like a very powerful form of protest.
All right, well, thank you for that. So I've saved, after that question, I've, say, I've saved my one frivolous question for you for, okay. the, for, for the ending, which okay. is I, I've taught film history and I, for 18 years. And I want you to know that when I get to expressionism, I play the, I carry a watermelon scene in, in Dirty Dancing. And we talk about the lighting and the pink. And when, I, when we talk about montages, I, I play the Hungry Eyes montage to talk about time and film. So, so now that we know each other a little bit better, uh, how well, I feel do that we know each other very well now. Dirty Dancing, <laughs> one of the greatest <laughs> films of all time. How do we feel about uh, what uh, Jennifer Grey is doing? Do we want to see what happens with Baby after Johnny Castle leaves her life? Like, how do we feel about that? I, well, I don't know if everybody wants to see it, but I would happily watch a sequel. Really? <laughs> about, all about the life of Baby, yeah. Actually, I want to know what happens to Johnny Castle, too. All right, all right. So uh, we're just going to ignore the TV show that happened. We're not. We're, we're just going to wait for the film. So my time is up. <laughs> thank you so much for the show, and thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to talk to you about it. Uh, have a great day, and thank you. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. All right. It is because of this Constitution that I can stand up here today and insist on a better future for our country. I met with young women who are doing these contests today. I am one of this generation's founding daughters telling you I want a document that takes action on climate change. Let's start with our own personal constitution and build our way out. Thank you. I feel so excited by young people lately. I really do. I feel like you all are shining a light backwards into the darkness so I can follow you into the future. We're in this together.